In this video, we will be understanding the law of variable proportion and the return to a factor. This is very important from a CBSC point of view. So do understand, you might get one question related to the law of variable proportion in your final exams. So let's understand what is return to a factor. See, return to a factor means the change in the physical output that is the output that we took the example of shirts so change in your output due to change in only one factor of production or let's say input and other factors are kept fixed. So this is your return to factor means how much your physical output will change if you keep on adding your variable factors to your fixed factor right so this is your return to a factor now understand what the law of variable proportion says the law of variable proportion states that as more and more of the variable factor is combined with the fixed factor a stage must ultimately come when marginal product of the variable factor starts declining. See what does this law of variable proportion says? That as more and more of variable factor, let's take the example of shirts again, means more of more of cotton yarns you keep on bringing to your factory right is combined with your fixed factor your fixed factor is your factory your land which you have in order to get the physical output that is the production you have right a stage must ultimately come when your marginal product of the variable factor starts declining see Earlier you used to have uh, let's say 1000 kgs of cotton yarn you required for the production of 100 shirts. Okay. Now you increased your variable factor let's say to 1500 kgs. You increase your production uh, to 65 shirts and then you again increase your raw material that is cotton yarns and again you increase your production. But you are increasing your variable product that is raw material you are increasing your uh, you know input of cotton yarns but do you have that enough space in your factory that you can ultimately you know 1 lakh kg of your cotton yarn you can get up you can put up in your factory and go through the production do you have that much resources with you no. So you are increasing your variable factor, you are increasing your raw material that is cotton yarn, you will be increasing your total output that is your shirts to some extent but if you keep on increasing your variable factor and your fixed factor remains constant so there will be a stage when your raw material will become wasteful, you won't be able to utilize it and make the output from it 
just because you have your fixed factors your fixed factors become inefficient in that point of time because your machines that you have you do not have that number of machines that you can utilize your 1 lakh kg of cotton yarn right you do not have the space in your factory where you can keep your 1 lakh kg of cotton yarn right so your fixed factors become inefficient and you keep on you know increasing your variable factor so at the stage will come when you your market marginal product that is the additional output by adding a additional variable factor will start declining right so let's see with the help of example let's see this example this is the unit of land that is your fixed factor which will be constant in the short run this is your units of labor that is your variable factor and you are adding the variable factor to the fixed factor 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 this is your total product 2 5 9 12 15 15 let's calculate the marginal product 2 3 9 minus 5 4 12 minus 3 9 14 minus 12 2 15 minus 14 1 15 minus 15 0 14 minus 15 that is minus 1 so now let's understand this is your stage 1 in this your marginal product is increasing this is your stage 2 your marginal product is decreasing this is your marginal product is zero and this is the stage three where your marginal product is negative See, when your total product is increasing, your marginal product will be positive. When your total product is increasing at an increasing rate, from 2 to 5, it has increased to 4, uh, 3 units. And from 5 to 9, from 3 to it has increased to 4 units. From 9 to 12, it has increased to 3 units. So, it is increasing at a Till here it is increasing at an increasing rate. From 4, 9 to, uh, from 5 to 9 it has 4 units. It has increased. Now from 9 to 12 it has increased only to 3 units. From 14 to 12 it has increased only to 2 units. From 15 to 14 it has increased to 1 unit. From 15 to 15 no units have increased. So from here your marginal, uh, your total product is rising but at the decreasing rate. From 3 to 2, then 2 to 1, then 1 to 0. And at this point, at this stage, your total product is reducing. So your MP becomes negative. So your stage 1 is increasing marginal product is your increasing return to factor this is your diminishing marginal product is diminishing return to factor and your negative marginal product is negative return to factor at this point your fixed factor has become inefficient because you do not have that 
enough of fixed factor that your variable product become useful to you so this is your law of variable proportion now let's understand this graphically let's make the graph of the previous example meter this is x y make the parallel graphs as we make it in the law of diminishing marginal utility i told you to make the parallel graphs here also you will make a parallel graph here we will take your total product here we will take your marginal product right here will be your x axis will be your units of variable proportion a uh, variable input that is your labor here also the units of labor will be One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Parallel to this, we will take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Extremely parallel to this, right? And then your total product. Let's take it on the scale of five. Five. 10 15 20 let's take it on a scale of 1 2 3 4 and 5 at one un unit of labor your total product was 2 At two, your total product was five. At three, it was nine. At four, it was twelve. At five, it was fourteen. At six, it was fifteen. At seven, it was fifteen. At eight, it again became fourteen. So this is your. total product right let's now plot the marginal product at one your product was 2 at two your product was 3 at three your product was 4 at four your product was 3 at 5 units your marginal product was 2 at 6 units your marginal product was 1 at 7 units your marginal product was 0 and at 8 unit your marginal product was negative so this is your marginal product this uh i cannot make the exact line just because i'm not having a pencil and a scale and my graphs are not extremely parallel to each other so make sure you make parallel graphs so you, that you can differentiate these stages properly so see till here till unit 3 your market marginal product is rising from unit 3 to unit 7 your marginal product is decreasing and from unit 8 your marginal product has become negative so this is stage 1 this is stage 2 and this is stage 3 your stage 1 is increasing return to factor
your stage 2 is diminishing return to factor and your stage 3 is negative return to factor so this is how we have explained you the stages the stage 1 the stage 2 and the stage 3 stage 1 is your increasing return to factor which means your total product is increasing at increasing rate therefore your marginal product is increasing in this stage 2 your total product is increasing at diminishing rate therefore your marginal product is decreasing and in the third stage your total product is decreasing therefore your marginal product is negative relationship between your total product and marginal product this can be the another question that you can get in your board exam so from the previous graph which we plot we can or the schedule which we made we can analyze that your marginal product is increasing when your TP increases at increasing rate make sure you make the diagram while explaining this second your MP starts diminishing your TP increases only at decreasing rate right third your MP is 0 your TP is at its maximum and the fourth relationship which we have got is your MP is negative when total product starts decreasing so this is the relationship between your total product and marginal product now there are certain assumptions to your law of variable proportion number one the ratio in which your factors of production are combined can be changed See, if your uh, fixed factor is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 and you are, you know, uh, adding only one additional factor to it, so your ratio is 1 is to 1, but you can also add 1, 3, 5, 8, 10, so you have different ratios, that is 1 is to 1 and then 1 is to 2, then 1 is to 2, then 1 is to 3, then 1 is to 2. So this is the ratio in which the factors of production and combined can be changed. The second is variable factors are homogeneous or equally efficient. That we take we took the example of shirt. So means your cotton yarn is equally efficient to manufacture your shirts. But what is not efficient that is your fixed factor that is your land you had. So your variable factors are equally efficient and the technology does not changes so these are the assumptions to your law of variable proportion so with this we complete your law of variable proportion and in this video we've also discussed about the relationship between your total product and the marginal product i hope you like the video 
Do download our Scholars Learning app and enjoy the learning experience with us.